Are you ready for some football? Are you glad that college football is back this weekend? Did you know there hasn't always been a huddle in football? Prior to the 1890s, quarterbacks just yelled out coded plays at the line of scrimmage, similar to today's hurry-up offense. Yet back in 1896, Paul Hubbard, the quarterback at Gallaudet School for the Deaf in Washington, D.C., suspected their opponents were stealing their hand signals. So Hubbard instructed his teammates to form a circle around him to prevent the other team's defense from reading their signals. Thus, the huddle was born. Now, other historians claim the first huddle was used at UGA that same year against Auburn. And not to be outdone, Alabama quarterback Burden Burr claimed to have invented the huddle the year before that after he was knocked dizzy and unable to remember the signals. He called for the team to surround him to discuss the next play. So whatever the origin, I invite you to huddle around this text with me to hear Paul's play calling to get his team ready to tackle the days ahead. Hear the good news from Ephesians 6, the 13th to the 18th verses from the message. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, help us to put on the full armor that you've blessed us with and use the gifts you've given us to face the days ahead. Amen. I have to admit, I've felt knocked down and dizzy in recent days, which makes it hard to remember the signals and call the plays. Anyone else? I've been fighting headaches and dizziness. I started getting lightheaded and swimmy every afternoon. It got so bad I would have to lie down. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Was I getting sick? Was it my blood pressure? My wife Elizabeth suggested I needed to get my eyes checked and the rest of the family wore glasses, but not me. I didn't want to admit to a chink in my armor. Yet over lunch at Brooklyn Cafe, one of our members, Jim Kilburn, insisted I get my eyes checked. He even made the appointment for me. And sure enough, I really needed glasses. Unfortunately, wearing the glasses only made the headaches worse. I was constantly taking them on and off and rubbing my eyes. And someone suggested I could get used to these progressive lenses by drinking a glass of wine. But I'm not a wine drinker, so that didn't help. I thought to myself, I'm not wearing glasses anymore. I've seen enough. Then Wendy Schmidt told me the secret. Put them on first thing in the morning and wear them all day. Don't wait until halfway through the day or you'll get headaches. Don't take them on and off. You need to wear them all the time to get used to them. In fact, they're only effective if you wear them. Paul would say the same about the whole armor of God in our text today. It's only effective if you wear it. Paul has been sitting in a Roman jail cell writing this letter to the church at Ephesus, trying to convince people to dress not for success but for faithfulness. Rather than complaining about the guards, he deftly uses the guards' very uniform as a metaphor for the Christian life. I love the way he does this, looking at his captors and redeeming his struggle with an image we still remember the whole armor of God, inviting us to dress for faithfulness each morning, putting on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. And then there's that moment you realize the whole armor of God has no pants. Shaun of the South told this story about a belt of truth. Willie May's first season in the majors was shaping up to be an awful one. After 26 plate appearances, he'd only hit the ball once. One day after a crushing defeat, young Willie Mays marched off to the showers and literally just sat there crying. He was ready to quit. There was too much pressure, too many expectations. His manager found him crying with his face in his hands and Willie begged the manager, send me back down to the minors. It's too hard up here. I don't belong here. The manager gave Willie some prophetic and practical advice. 
you'll get two hits tomorrow, Willie, if you'll just pull up your pants. The next day, when Willie approached the plate, the manager was in the dugout, pulling his pants up like a clown, trying to remind Willie to do this. Giants fans watched the young rookie grab his belt and make a big production of hoisting the waistline of his pants as high as they could possibly go. Willie got two hits that day, and they beat the Pirates 14 to 3. For the next game, Willie, Willie pulled his pants, his, his belt up above his belly button, and he went on to win the Rookie of the Year that year in 1951. When asked about his success later in life, Willie credited the advice of his manager. Pull up your pants, he said. It turned out to be a belt of truth for him. He had the rest of the uniform right, but the belt was not telling the truth. For in baseball, the bottom of the strike zone is at the knees, and the Giants manager noticed Willie's pants were so baggy that the red dirt marks on Willie's knees sagged several inches below his actual kneecaps, which expanded his strike zone. But when he pulled his pants up, it shrank the strike zone to where it actually should be, which meant that Willie should, could, and would tear the cover off the ball. So if you're having a bad day, if you're doubting your worth, if you're feeling down, take the advice of one of the greatest ball players of all time. Get out there, keep trying, keep swinging, and when all else fails, pull up your pants. Tighten the belt of truth around yourself and pull up your pants. Paul tells us, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon that God has issued. God offers us these gifts to help us. Put them on first thing in the morning and wear them all day. Fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Surround yourself with what is true. Wear the breastplate of righteousness to cover your heart in righteousness. For the football uniform, we would put on shoulder pads like these. We would never imagine sending a child out to play football without the proper equipment. So why would you go into the game of life without the proper uniform? One of the kids asked me, where do football players go when they need a new uniform? And I said, they go to their trainer. And they said, nope, they go to New Jersey. I tell my children this truth about the shoulder pads of righteousness. You will never regret taking the high road. It might be rocky and difficult, but in the long run, you won't regret clothing yourself in righteousness. And how about some peace shoes? Does anybody have any peace shoes at home? Do your shoes take you in the direction of peace or towards unnecessary conflict? Paul tells us to lift up the shield of faith to protect ourselves from the arrows of evil. For me, the shield of faith is prayer, as Paul reminds us, saying, pray, pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Feel too busy to pray or you forget sometimes? Why not pray as you get dressed in the morning? We even created a card to remind you. And if you want, please contact the church through the website and we will send you one. Fasten the belt of truth, praying, Lord, help me to know what is false. Put on the shirt or blouse of righteousness. Guide me on the high road. Lace up our shoes of peace. Help me to remember who I am in the midst of conflict and who you are, God, allowing prayer to shield us throughout the day. Last Friday, our church was packed to celebrate the life of Betsy Gentry. And Betsy prayed this simple prayer every morning. God, open my eyes to people who need help, a laugh or a smile today. Prayer was her shield of faith that she lifted up each morning. She clothed herself every day with the whole armor of God. Even when she was going through chemo, she didn't stop living. She said, why should I let cancer slow me down? The whole armor of God also includes the helmet of salvation. Think about that as you, what you need to do to prepare your head for the day. Pray as you brush your hair or don your glasses. I hear they're only effective if you wear them. Although Gallaudet invented the huddle, over the years it's gotten harder and harder for them to compete with other schools. Deaf athletes are at a distinct disadvantage on the football field, but a new helmet became their salvation. Last season, AT&T and Gallaudet University unveiled the first ever 5G football helmet. The helmet contains an internal heads-up display. Gallaudet's head coach uses a tablet computer with the team's playbook in it to send plays to the quarterback. The quarterback then sees the plays in a display right above his right eye. 
The quarterback relays the plays to his team, which results in an instantaneous clear communication, reducing mistakes and penalties. The helmet levels the playing field. Some days, I, I wish I had an actual heads up display in front of me, don't you? So I could see with certainty what play God is calling for me next. When I start my day right, it is easier to know the plays God has called. But when I don't fasten my helmet of salvation in the morning, how can I expect God to call the plays in my life? I often end up calling my own plays and that seldom goes well for long. What if we woke up every morning and as we were getting dressed, we considered clothing ourselves in the whole armor of God. We put on our belts and pray, May I be surrounded by your truth today. We put on our blouses or our shirts and think, may my heart be covered in what is right. We lace up our shoes and think, may I stand for peace in a world at war. We put on our shields, praying for God's protection against words that can hurt us and others. And finally, we don the helmet of salvation, remembering our baptism, hearing God say, I have claimed you as my own and that protects our minds. Perhaps we should do the same as we set out clothes for our children or help them to get dressed. Yet we need the whole uniform to be effective. Some think, well, I'm saved, I got my helmet, so I'm good, I've got the helmet of salvation. Yet we don't need spiritual streakers out there who are wearing only the helmet. We need to wear the whole armor of God. Paul says it this way, therefore take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. A few weeks ago, a lightning strike started a fire at the Zebulon United Methodist Church down in Pike County. Local firefighters were deployed. The fire grew and grew despite the firefighters' best efforts. Now several of those firefighters had just graduated from the fire academy 30 minutes before the fire started. Can you imagine? Some of the other firefighters were part of the Georgia Department of Corrections Fire School. Have you ever heard of this? The Georgia Department of Corrections Fire Services operates 19 fire stations in our state prisons and six in county prisons across Georgia. Inmate firefighters can be certified through these programs and be hired as career fighter fighters upon their release. When they are released, they have something purposeful when they get out, which is the number one way to keep them from going back. These firefighters are protected with their full uniforms from the bottom of their shoes to the top of their helmets. When there was nothing left to fight of the fire at the church, one of those new firefighters was seen kneeling in the grass. The pastor said it looked like he was throwing up. He racked with pain, his body convulsing. She thought it must have been his first real fire and he was overwhelmed. So she went over to comfort him, but as she got closer, she realized that he was praying aloud, hurting for the people of that church. And she heard him pray, Dear God, you have given me a second chance. Thank you for not being done with me. I pray that you're not done with these people or this church. Please give them a second chance. He was one of the prison firefighters. The, army of God, the armor of God is only effective if you wear it. So what are you wearing? Might we prayerfully put on the whole armor of God each morning? What are you wearing out these days so that you don't wear out? And just so everyone is clear... I'm going to wear my glasses. See what I did there? I'm going to wear my glasses. I hear they're only effective if you wear them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.